Okay, so we're going to look at prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. And to save a little bit of time, and I can't really um, project here, so I did a quick little sketch of a prokaryotic cell uh, and a eukaryotic cell. And with a little bit of detail, um, but not very much. Um, and a little scale here I need to talk about uh, is size. So uh, beside having, a, we'll talk about the nucleus part first, and then we'll talk about the size next and, and some of the other things. So as far as the nucleus goes, so the nucleus in a cell <clears throat> is what holds the DNA. But without a nucleus in the cell, uh, the DNA is free. Free DNA, and that's in the cytoplasm. So that's another term here, cytoplasm. So we're going to have a space, and both, both cells will have it. So the, the space that is that makes up all the liquid, you know, inside the cell is called the cytoplasm. Cyto P L A S M. And, and there's a cytoplasm here in the, the prokaryotic cell. The liquid technically is called cytosol, and then the space is called the cytoplasm. Uh, the DNA here, so I'm representing the DNA the chromosome of a bacteria. So the chromosome of a bacteria um, is typically circular. Uh, so I kind of did this uh, this way. Um, and that it's free. So it's just floating around in the cytoplasm. So good things, bad things about that. Some of the bad things, it's exposed to any toxins, uh, any chemicals that are produced as waste products from the metabolism of the bacteria. They, the DNA is exposed to those. As opposed to the eukaryotic cell, now, in the eukaryotic cell, what we have is that there's a membrane. And we're going to get into membranes, the big topic the, of the second exam in this course. Um, the membrane is what structures the cell. It's what creates an environment that's different from inside the cell to the outside of the cell. And it's not just a static barrier. Uh, it is active. And there are proteins there that are constantly moving things. Now, in a prokaryotic cell, <clears throat> there's this one environment, the environment with the DNA. In a eukaryotic cell, now we have this, this environment, the cytoplasm, but then we have the nucleus. Okay, And the nucleus is even going to be, later we'll study this in more detail, a double membrane. So there's actually two membranes surrounding the DNA of the cell. So protecting it and regulating what can actually come in or out of the nucleus. There are then other membrane structures surrounding that, things called endoplasmic reticulum, or referred to commonly as the ER. And so if I don't know what ER is. Make sure you look that up. Endoplasmic reticulum. There are structures outside the endoplasmic reticulum that are more membranes that are kind of they're separated into little sacs. Uh, they're called Golgi apparatus. The job of the Golgi and the ER are typically in processing proteins. Now, if we go back a step, uh, the DNA's job really doesn't have a job. It doesn't do anything. DNA is just a code for the structure of proteins. And, and so it is, is read the way a, a, a book would be read, an instruction manual. And it gives the specific sequence of amino acids um, and which amino acids go in a particular order. And that's, that's all it is. It's protected here. When that information is used to make proteins, they sometimes need to be modified and changed. And that happens in these two environments, the ER and the Golgi. Now the bacteria lack those structures. They don't have any internal membranes. And so this is going to be another key thing about um, prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. The eukaryotic cells, in addition to the nucleus, that's their defining characteristic, they have many internal membranes. Let's abbreviate that for short. So mem for membranes, okay? And the prokaryotes, no internal membranes. So in addition, no nucleus, no nuclear membrane, no, nothing else. A lot of these little squiggles and structures I drew here are all made up of, of membranes. So we have the nucleus, the ER, the Golgi, some of these little structures here. This one, uh, these would represent things called mitochondria. Um, lysosomes. All these structures, they're made up of membranes. So lysosomes, a membrane sac. 
The mitochondria, double membrane sac. There's two compartments even within it. So they just have membranes making compartments and compartments and compartments. And all those compartments allow specialization. They allow waste to be stored in certain places. They allowed ions to be stored in certain places. They allowed certain enzymes to go in certain places. Now in a prokaryotic cell, we don't, we can't have that, right? So everything is in this one cytoplasm, all the enzymes, all the waste, right? All the proteins, the DNA, all the molecules, they're all here. If you study bacteria, you'll find that there, there are some ways that they can structure this environment uh, to be a little bit more specialized, but it's nothing like the, the eukaryotic cell. And this is gonna lead to this other, other major characteristic uh, of them. The, the prokaryotic cells are going to be small whereas the eukaryotic cells can be, well, you wouldn't say large, okay, but we're gonna say larger than the prokaryotic cells. But what I wanna to add to this is not just small, but restricted. Okay, so what do I mean, what do I mean by that? So prokaryotic cells are tiny, and in addition to that, the range in which we find them is very narrow, okay? so. Here, I have some numbers from, from one source here, 0.1 to 5, and these this little symbol here is micrometer, M-I-C-R-O, micrometer, or we call it micrometers. All right. They're tiny, and there's not a lot of range in that size, okay? So say like 0.1 to, to 5. Here, we have 10 to 100 micrometers. Now, the thing is, the difference, this is big. Five is, is pretty large. Um, for a bacterial cell, right? Usually they're, they're smaller than that. And so the range is even more narrow than what's represented here. So it's a very narrow range, a restricted size. However, with the eukaryotic cells, this is just the average. The range is actually greater than this. There are some individual eukaryotic cells that can be up to a meter. Right? That's right, yeah, a meter is three feet. Right? So a giant axon, a nerve axon of a squid, a single cell, has been measured at that size. Eggs, an unfertilized egg is a single cell. Uh, so you can hold a, a fish egg, a frog egg, an amphibian egg in your hand. There are many um, proteists, the types of organisms that are like an amoeba. Um, and they secrete a glue that they glue little sand grains together and create a shell around themselves. They're, they're organisms called foraminifera. So they're a single cell, but they look like a marble. So you would hold it in your hand and you think like you have a little hard marble, but that's actually a single cell with a little shell around it that it created. Now, that's one eukaryotic cell. So eukaryotic cells can be very small. They could be as small as bacterial cells. And they can be big. They can be so big you could hold them in your hand. You don't even need a microscope to see the cell. So the there are two kind of questions here. It's not only why are these small and why are these bigger, but why are these so restricted in their size? They don't have much of a range. And why can these be you know, really tiny or really large? I mean, I said there's an average size here, but they can be, they can be much bigger. So why do you think that is? All right, well, now the depiction here, you know, like I said, isn't, isn't quite the equal, I kind of drew them almost, you know, equal in size. But let's say, uh, um, well, let's say in general, these two cells, you know, the, the eukaryotic cell um, would be, you know, like this. So E, U for the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic cell, you know, would be like that. So the prokaryotic cell. But let's say for the sake of a comparison here, we draw them at the same relative size because there is a there's a high end here and a low end here that could, that can really um, just about overlap in terms of their their range. All right, so let's say they were the same. So we had a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell, and let's say they were the same size. Well, what we know of is that inside the cell is the cytoplasm, right? And that cytoplasm has a certain volume. All right, so it's the volume of the liquid inside the cell. Now, that volume for this cell, the prokaryotic cell, uh, isn't broken up into compartments. It is just, it's all in one. And the surface area of the cell, surface area is the amount of membrane it has. Okay, so that's the amount of membrane going around the outside of the cell. So 
the eukaryotic cell has that surface area, but in addition to that, it has more. So there's more surface because when we add this up, we're not only adding the outer membrane, but for surface area, you add up all the internal membranes too. So you add in the nucleus and you add in the Golgi and ER and mitochondria and all those other membranes and all those other compartments. Same volume, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but a lot more surface area. Now, what's going to happen if these cells were to grow, all right, if these cells were to get bigger? So let's say this one gets this larger here and this one gets you know larger too, the same size. They're both getting bigger. Well, what's going to happen is both of them are going to have more volume. Okay, so more volume for, for each of these. They both have more surface area, right? This one has more surface too. Surface is, is going to increase. This one will have the same surface increase, right? Because of its outer membrane here. But in addition, all those inner membranes are going to get bigger, you know, as well. So what's going to happen is when the cells get larger, the surface area and volume ratios, okay, so it's something that's called um, surface to volume ratio, and I'll try to highlight it here so you can see it among everything else that's written up here. So the surface to volume ratio, if we're comparing these two. What's going to happen is that as the volume and surface area both grow, as a eukaryotic cell gets larger, they can maintain a balance. So these guys will stay in balance. But what's going to happen to a prokaryotic cell, a bacterial cell, is that as it gets larger, the amount of surface added as it grew and got a little bit bigger, it's not as much as the internal volume grew. So it actually has more volume than surface. Okay. And say, okay, well, that, and that could be done mathematically and you could find in your book um, a little diagram that actually shows the math on that. You might find some pictures with a cube or some other things that actually give you specific numbers to, to show you how that happens. All right. So I'm not going to do that here right now. Uh, just the basic explanation of the process. But what you need to know is that is why it even matters. Right. It's, so it's like, so what? So what? Who cares? Um, more surface, less surface. Well, if I said the surface of the cell, the membrane of the cell is where all the action and activity takes place. So it's where waste is removed from the cell or nutrients can be brought in. So if the volume of the cell gets bigger, but it's active area, the area that can store waste, the area that can remove the waste, the area can, that can bring in nutrients is not getting as big as it needs to be to support the life of the cell the cell will become less 